Welcome back to BusyBots. Thanks for stopping by. I've been doing a lot of printing on the Metal Max. Thought I'd show you how to run a, uh, quickly how to run a color change. Right now I've got the black filament spooled up here. It's being fed down this way, I'll show you. And I want to switch over to some red. I'm going to print some, print some X ends for a Metal Max. Now changing colors on some extruders is really, really difficult. Sometimes you have to get some tools out, maybe open up the extruder or remove the idle arm and kind of feed the filament down in there. Uh, with this setup here, running the uh, micro extruder, basically there's no tools necessary. Remove one uh, filament color and feed in the next. Uh, the important thing is to purge out the old color. It takes about 150 millimeters, give or take, of, uh, of new filament to push out all the old filament. And it depends upon how you remove the old filament. You can either um, pull it out, in which case you have less to purge, or you can push it out. And uh, there's reasons to do either way. It doesn't really matter. Uh, I think today what I'll do is I'll um, I'll just push the old filament out. So what I'll do is I'll cut the I'll cut the black right where it enters the top of the extruder, and then I'll switch the spools over and get the red ready to feed in. Make sure the nozzle's heated up. Uh, run the uh, Proner face controls to turn on the extruder, and feed in about 150 millimeters until all the black is gone, and I'm getting a nice bright red coming out. And then I'll be ready for the next print. So let's take a look what we have here before I remove anything. Uh, first of all, I printed a uh, test calibration test, uh, just a, kind of the bare minimum, just to make sure that my Z height was set correct. And I actually had a little bit of a problem on the left side, so I just adjusted the uh, coupler here to get the right height all around. So I know that my um, Z height is set properly. So here I've got a, a filament holder. This is just made out of some PVC pipe, and it just spins nice and freely on there. I do put a little bit of grease right where the uh, right on the PVC, and it runs just through here through this guide, and it comes straight down right into the extruder. And I'll get in closer, move the light here, and you can see that the the filament passes right there, right between the um, the hobbed gear and the bearing on the right hand side. So uh, what I'll do is I'll take some wire cutters, and we'll cut right here. Okay. And then I'll just switch my spools and I'll heat up the extruder nozzle and I can uh, run proner face and turn the extruder on. It'll, it'll pull this black down and I'll push the red through and make sure the, the uh, while I'm watching, make sure the red, fe the red feeds properly right through there. And once the red has been grabbed by the hob bolt, or the hob gear in this case, uh, I'll just keep purging about 150 millimeters and then I'll be ready to print in red. Uh, the only other thing I need is this little spatula to take off the uh, old print off the Kapton tape. Another quick little tip, when you remove your calibration part, you can see here I just peel up the corner and I can peel it off. Take this off and keep it, put it on the table in the same orientation that you removed it, and then measure it with your calipers all the way around. And that will show you if your bed's really level. Sometimes uh, it's easier to do that than to try to hook up a dial indicator and actually measure. So. Take your, um, take the loop off, set it aside, and measure it. And if you're high or low on one side or the other, it's really easy to tell. You can make a small little tweak and make your prints that much better. Now that I have the red filament spooled up and the black one cut off, the next thing I do is come here into Proner Face. And let's show you the, I'll uh, set the uh, temperature of the extruder. Get the focus there. And I'm going to set my heater to 224. I don't need the bed on right now because I'm just uh, heating up the extruder. And here you can see the progress. The nozzle heats up pretty quickly. The, the bed takes longer, but the nozzle heats up in just a couple of minutes. And once that's up to temperature, I'll extrude. I have it set to extrude 20 millimeters here. Um, that's enough to get it started and to engage the hob to gear, I think. And uh, once it's engaged, then I'll come up and increase this number. Uh, to maybe 50, maybe 50 at a time. I run that two or three times until all the black is gone and I'm just uh, extruding red. You see the temperature is coming up pretty quickly. Okay, the extruder is up to temperature. I'm just got, I have my new filament in position right here above the old. I'm substituting the black for red and I'm going to click extrude on the proner face. There we go. And it's going pretty slowly but it is going down in there 
I'll reposition the camera and show you the plastic coming out of the extruder nozzle so you can see it coiling up. I, I raised the extruder a uh, fair amount to give myself plenty of room so I didn't cause a big plastic blobby mess underneath the nozzle. So now it's just kind of spiraling down there. So that was the first 20, wasn't quite enough, so now I'm running the second 20. And this will be enough to grab the red. So there it is. And uh, I'm just going to make sure that it feeds down through the lower hole in the extruder body. There it goes. And that's it. Now I can let go. Let the, let the machine do the rest. Okay, I've lowered the camera so you can see underneath. That's the first uh, 40 millimeters of uh, black filament hanging out here. I can just pull that out. And now I've got the extruders, I've got front fronter face set to 50. So now I'll extrude. Here comes 50. And what I want to make sure is that it doesn't uh, get stuck on the nozzle, kind of loop around. There we go. Just free the end of it. And I'll just let it run, let it coil up. And uh, that's what you want to see. If your nozzle is nice and clean, no obstructions, uh, it's not damaged, so you'll get this nice coil effect. And um, this will take uh, probably three different uh, runs of 50 millimeters at a time. I could probably set it to 150, do it one shot, but just in case anything happens, you don't want it to be in the middle of extruding when you can't stop it. So I'll probably run it at 50 millimeters three times. This is the second run of 50 millimeters. So the red now is actually pushing the black out. This is just how much residual black filament there was left inside the extruder. Here's what I've gotten so far. I keep these, by the way. Toss them in a box. Eventually, there should be a way to recycle this and print it again. So it doesn't take too much space. I generally keep... Uh, my, my failed prints and things like this I just toss in a box. Okay, I'm not sure if you can see, but after that second 50, I'm starting to get a dark, uh, dark red coming out. So now I'll extrude another 50. Let me clear that out. And hopefully by the end of this run of 50, I'll have a good, solid, bright red filament coming out. It does make a nice transition. It doesn't. It's not a sudden change from one color to the other, as they're melting together in the melt chamber of the nozzle. Well, that third run of 50 wasn't quite enough to purge that all the black, so we'll run it again. Let's see what we get. Now you can see it kind of bunching up up there. So let's pull that off. You don't want the plastic uh, accumulating on the nozzle because you can get color mixing on your print. It's a good idea to clean the nozzle once in a while so that you don't get any, um, any color rubbing off onto the surface of the next print you make. It's almost coming out like a nice metallic red, but uh, it'll be more of a primary red by the time all the black is purged. And that's how you change color on the Metal Max. Pretty simple. Just run it right through that extruder, pass one color through the other. The other way you can do it is to, is to uh, uh, I cut it flush right here, but you can cut it higher. You can heat up the nozzle and actually pull it up and out. That works pretty well. Although you do have to sometimes pass a blob of filament here between the, the, uh, the roller bearing and the, and the hob gear, and that can catch up. Uh, see, this way I didn't have to make any tension adjustments on the bearing. So I generally prefer to do it this way. And that looks pretty good. I think just for good measure, do one more run of, uh, of 50 millimeters just to make sure that the bottom of our print doesn't have any, um, any, any dark coloration or black in it. Of course, the, the first layer that prints will have the, the, uh, the black if there's any left in there. Uh, it's a good idea to run a, run a loop and slicer anyway. Also helps to purge out any old colors. Anyhow, thanks for watching. Uh, I had a couple of people send me some notes on YouTube asking about uh, color changes at a swap filament. So hopefully this describes the process fairly well. Uh, I'm really happy with this setup on the Metal Max. It works very well. I've used some other extruders where 
changing color is a little bit more involved. So thanks for stopping by. If you enjoyed the video, give a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I want to correct what I said earlier. I said it took about 150 millimeters of filament to purge one color with another. Well, here it is. It took 340 millimeters. So those first two 20s were uh, feeding in through the top, and then uh, the last set of 50s were 300 millimeters to push out the old color. Of course, you'd use a lot less if you uh, remove the filament by pulling it out the top. But uh, in this case, I didn't have to uh, mess with the tension on the bearing and, and experiment feeding that way. So I'd say my preferred method is probably uh, pushing the old filament out with the new. And here's the first layer going down with our nice bright primary red for some XNs for a Mendel Max. The first layer prints a lot slower than the uh, following layers. Make sure we get good heat adhesion and a nice smooth flat layer to build on.